drop, gonna drop. How did you get interested in music and being a rapper to begin with? I used to fall through Giz. Rest in peace to Giz, Gizmo. Um, Giz, one of the, this, this kid, fire. When it comes to spitting, do fire. Um, then I just started rhyming, writing shit and stuff like that. And then I'll, I'll be with him rhyming and whatever and in the park and 23 park and, you know, and, and that because we was already I was already terror squad. I was already in the crew in the in the family and all that. Dude, I never went home. I fucking lived in forest. I never went home. Never. I, what age? What age are you talking? 16 when it started. 16. 16. And then I just never fucking went home. <clears throat> and then um. So that's where I started with the with doing music or whatever. And I had my own style or whatever and everything like that, you know, saying coming up. And um that's how that's how the whole thing was. And it's crazy because I was the original fat Joe hype man. What the fuck? Dude, I was fucking, I was the original hype man. I used to go with Joe everywhere, nigga. I used to the whole crew, yo, listen, dude. Sid got a whole bunch of receipts. Go back to everybody. Everybody would tell you all the original from little hag to 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 uh, to the pistol Pete that we know from the block. Um, to everybody, man, from Bronx River, from everybody. When we used to go and run with Joe, because we used to go fucking mob deep with Joe to these shows and show face. And then when I'll get on stage with them, they'll be like, "Yo, pass the mic to Tune, pass the mic to Tune." Everybody. That's the way it was. That's the way it was. I wasn't the dopest rapper on the planet. I have my own style. I'm doing me. You know what I'm saying? But I used to be there supporting this snake, supporting them. You know what I'm saying? This is before huh? Represent. Is this before Represent, the album? Before his first album? No, this was a Flojo. Oh, this was Flojo already. Okay, so the first album came out already? Or is this the single? I don't think the album came out. I think it was the single. I'm not sure. I think it was the single. But we used to run with them every fucking where. Everywhere. And, and that's that. You know... You know when you, when you show up and you got a hundred niggas with you, people tend to respect you. That's a fact. People tend, and then but everywhere you show up is these fifty to a hundred Puerto Rican motherfuckers. You feel what I'm saying? Everybody dressed the same, crazy. So every and then you know it, it, crazy, and then you had a bunch of dudes that were really about that life, really crazy. That we were all on some shit. <clears throat> so. And then it was, we got to the, we used to not get invited to parties. People used to not tell us. They used to leave the block. We used to go to the block. Yo, where everybody at? They're not here, man. And they didn't want to tell us where they were at because they knew if we showed up to the party, it was over. It was that type of crew. You know what I'm saying? But we always ran with him. We did everything, everything with him, everything with him. And it's like I said, it ain't bashing nobody. It ain't none of that. It's just being a hundred about shit. And that's where, you know, I started doing more, started getting more into the music. But it wasn't me into the music as in, oh, I want to get a record deal or nothing like that. Nah, dude, I was still hooked in the street, nigga. I was still on, I was still about that money. I was still about that, you know, give me this and give me that. I was still about that. I was still that dude that'll wait for you in the fucking 10th floor elevator, you know, shit like that. But I, I just, been, that wasn't serious for me like that. I, it could have been, I could have got better. At that time, I feel like I'm, I was fire afterwards, but at that time, I could have got better and, you know, did, did the whole thing and everything like that. But I didn't do that, man. I was just too street, too street. So you definitely think that the name Terror Squad benefited as the record label and the group, the group and everything benefited because it came from the street team as far as like the intimidation and just like the yeah. risk from the street, right? 100%. 100%. It propelled the fact that he was viewed as a real dude. Like, he really about that business. Like, Let's keep this 100. Joe is a real dude. All right? Let's, let's stop. Let's stop the capping. Let's stop all the bullshit. Joe is a real dude. All right? Joe just happened to be a real dude that had 100 niggas with him. Always. You feel me? There was a time that I had a hundred niggas with me. Always. And it was because it had to be done. That's the way you got to move. That's the way you could move. You feel what I'm saying? You couldn't move by yourself. Not from the Bronx. Not from where we came from. Not from where we came from. Because niggas will run up on you, man. It was that light. It was that shit. 
motherfuckers was jumping out of cabs, lighting you up and jumping right back in that cab and leaving. So, you know, I, I'm going to keep it 100. I'm not going to take it away from the dude. Yes, he was about that life. As a gunner or a shooter, no, absolutely not. No. But he, he, he'll give you those hands. When I interviewed Charlie Rock, right, he was saying that Joe never really put in work. Like, he wasn't really about that life like that. So, and I understand that there's different definitions when you talk about what do you mean. Man, I wrote a clip. You and Joe, the, you guys are out running the streets at this time, and, and you guys had a reputation. What, like, were you guys on the same thing, or were you guys doing different things? I know you said that you were a stick-up kid at the time. Was he on that as well? Joe was never about that life. Joe was my little brother. I would shield him away from, you know, he even says, again, in the book of Jose. Fat Joe goes on to mention that him and Tony Montana, who Tony became a G in his own right, who got murdered and got shot eight times in the chest. Again, in his book, Joe says that while him and Tony was running around beating people up and on that type of level, Charlie Rock was already into the gunplay. I was doing heists. I was sticking up McDonald's and supermarkets. I mean, this is what he's saying in his book, word for word. And it's the truth. You know, Joe was not putting in that work. Once I got arrested, him and Tone stepped up and they made some money. But as far as like that, being a gangster and putting in work, Joe was never known for that. You know what I mean? He'll beat somebody up or whatever, but there's different, there's different levels of putting in work. You know what I mean? And, you know, <laughs> those that know, know. You know what I mean? It is what it is. Yeah, I seen that interview, and um, I, there's there's things that I disagree about that because, like I said, I got stories with with with, with um Charlie Rock too. You know what I'm saying? Charlie Rock used to be with me too when I used to be um going to Clinton High School and all these different high schools and robbing people for their leather bombers. He used to be with me there. You know what I'm saying? I got I got Charlie Rocker's first bubble goose, and it came courtesy from the dude in the handball court in Clinton High School. You know what I mean? So. There's a lot of stories, a lot of history that I could tell you some real street shit, real thug street shit. Um, but um, like I said, I can't. Joe, uh, Joe, a real dude. There's just no capping that. There's no changing that. Um, people go uh, love it, like it or not like it or dislike it. But Joe's a real nigga. Joe is a real dude. Um, did he do a lot of like uh, real life street shit, like gangster shit with the guns and run up and bang, bang, bang? No, no, I've never seen that. And I came up with everybody. I've never seen him run up on blocks with the guns and all of that. But at the same time, you got to you got to realize something with different definitions of people's lives and how the way they run their life. You don't have to run up to a block with a gun and shoot off and do none of that. You don't have to do none of that. When you got a hundred niggas that will do it for you. Right. Let's keep it real. And it doesn't, it, you know. What I respect about what you're saying, though, is like you could tell you're being fair. It's not just like you're purely hating on Joe or anything like that. No, you're saying he was a real dude. He is a real dude, right? He really he is about the business. Now, people have different definitions. Like we said, like Charlie's definition of putting in work is really letting that letting that thing go right but you're saying like joe never did that but it might be because he never had to do that like somebody somebody was a shooter like people specialize in different things basically but he he down to fight you always saw him fight joe i've seen i've seen joe go with the hand i've seen joe come pick come get us and we'll, we'll fucking usually the beef was like a few blocks away from us so we'll just walk to the fucking beef you know what i'm saying so there's times that we walk, we went with Joe, walk with Joe, and as soon as we get there, he's with the hands. He's about that. You know what I'm saying? Joe's always, always, never, if he, if he had to fight somebody, he was never on like, yo, blitz, jump him. Nah, Joe went in there, did his thing or whatever, and we were there, and, and it just happened to be that we wanted to have fun too, and then people used to get hospitalized, and that's just the way it was. Um, but, the, but, you know, I just, you know, it ain't to clear things up for him or nothing like, you know what I'm saying? I'm not hating or nothing like that. I'm just keeping it 100. Um, I was there. I was physically there. I'm the dude that came up 
there, actually there. All these other motherfuckers ain't got can't tell these stories. They can't say this because they were nowhere near that. Nowhere near it. None. That's why I say there's a difference from the real terror squad and the record label terror squad. Because the record label terror squad dudes is not taking nothing away from them because I'm sure they live and they've done live shit. But it's the difference. They the terror, they the record label dudes. Not the, the guys that where Joe actually physically came up from. Not the niggas that actually died for a lot of shit that had to be done. But as in Joe being real and not real, I'll put a stop to it right now. Yes, the niggas, he's really real. He's a real dude he, about his shit. 